Hello, and welcome to Two Front War, a bi-weekly podcast that covers the Yankees and Giants 2024 season. I'm Andrew. And I'm Liam. Well, Liam, we are back. It is opening, or opening week is, is officially over. Uh, how are you feeling? How are you feeling at the at the end of this? this I week? am amazing. I am ecstatic. That's good. This is fun. Baseball is back, and baseball is fun. Baseball is back. That's fun. Uh, after this opening week, I think it probably could have... Uh, Spend a little more time in, in the oven for me. <laughs> uh, for you, for you, for me, yeah. Um, but uh, before we get started, uh, Liam, yeah, how's your week been? You do anything fun? Uh, I'm I'm a film student, so I've been roped into a couple more sets that of various degree. That's... But been working on that and just catching up on bunch of design work i gotta get done so i pass classes and all that gross but in between i've been indulging in some fantastic yankees baseball if i do say so myself well, that's good that's good uh i uh found the the joys of mlb the show multiplayer mm-hmm. uh not doing good not 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 doing great not doing great uh i'm owing two and i uh, got destroyed by vogelbach Ooh, the, the, yeah, I gave up a three-run home run to that dude. You're in good company. You you uh, share that with a, a Garrett Cole this dude, season. Yeah, uh, that's my Garrett Cole moment. Um, it's been. I, I find that I'm actually a better hitter online than I am against the computer. So that's that's cool. All right, well, let's get this started. Uh, why don't you give us uh, your opening week recap, Liam, for the them their Yankees them their Yankees these damned Yankees let me tell you starting the season off going to what Michael Kay has said to be our new arch rivals the Houston Astros in Houston we have two away series before we see the Bronx at all but we're starting it out in the most popular I think the most populated city in Texas but we're going there and we're not just going there for three games we're going there for four games So heavy implications, especially because if we end up with tied records, whoever walks away from this series is the tiebreaker on who gets like a higher seed or who gets into the playoffs at all. So a lot at stake for the first series of the year. We're going in with a lot of question marks and the rotation and in the lineup. We don't know who exactly is like an everyday guy in some aspects. We don't know who's going to be a utility guy for the season. Mm-hmm. But the Yankees walk away, sweeping the new arch rival. Nice. And After you guys got swept, what two years ago? Uh, I think even. Or was it last year? I don't think we won. Uh, I think we only won one regular season series over the past two years between them. But we've mm-hmm. definitely got swept sometime over the past. I think two it, was, years. it was two years in the postseason. About two years ago. Oh, yeah. Two years in the postseason? Yeah. Yep. We, they, they got clobbered. Yeah, they did. <laughs> but what a series. Mm-hmm. I am so happy of just guys producing, guys immediately becoming useful. It could not have gone better, I don't think. The only way it could have gone better is if there was like a no hit or like a shutout. But to touch on some of the highlights, I talked about people immediately becoming useful. Uh, Grisham and Soto, two of the newest acquisitions, mm-hmm. immediately leaving their mark. Soto coming to the plate, getting magic done. Grisham, great defensively. Both of them great defensively. Soto had a game-saving play. I think it was like the first game. Just launching a rocket from right field back to home where yes. uh, he made the out, which could have saved extra innings. It could have even saved like a rally to win the first game of the season but that was great and then grisham ending the game with a great catch great diving slide catch what's uh grisham play what's his position uh he was playing left field in that game field okay the big question mark throughout the past like three years now andrew i have a question for you okay if i were to ask you starting out the season who's going to have their breakout year or even just like break out a couple games to start off a a, a a new season, a new 
uh, era of the Yankees, who would that be? To, to do like a breakout? Yeah, who, who's going to have a breakout just to start off their, start off their line, start off their season? I mean, my, my first guess would be Soto, just because he's, he's young and he's, everyone seems excited for him. Not not terribly wrong. He was up there, but the king of the mountain would have to be Oswaldo Cabrera, who for okay. this entire series just decided to become the greatest baseball player who ever lived. Nice. That's awesome. I mean, I'm seeing his stats right here. and uh, look, look at these stats. For, for these, look at these stats. Series. That is beautiful. 438 batting average, seven hits, two home runs, six RBIs, three runs scored in four games. Wow. <laughs> That's if great. he continued that trajectory, like Bonds would be sweating. He immediately became useful. And I believe reading that as standard procedure, he was going to get pulled out and they were going to put in their uh, new trade acquisition in from the Marlins. I'm blanking on his name, but I will pull him up soon. Just like for rotation reasons, keep him healthy, but he's hot. And Aaron Boone decided to keep him in for that fourth game. And I think it made the difference. I think he stayed hot throughout all of this. And I'm just so happy just because I've been a fan of him ever since he came up. And after a down year last year, that would have some guys, you know, reconsidering some life choices. He answered the call. He made some changes to his swing. I think uh, he did this little toe tap thing and he's either gotten rid of it or it's like been very minimized. So it's like, just like a slight, maybe like, bring forward of like his big toe but also the way he's just like holding his bat it's coming in at a much stronger angle i'm loving the changes he's made i hope he keeps producing he's produced in the next two series that we've also covered but i'll also have to talk about some other people so this might be the last time i'll be mentioning him by name but oswaldo cabrera amazing job he he almost convinced me to buy the new absolutely terrible fanatics jersey just because I wanted to memorialize this run he went on. That that's my MVP for the series. That is uh giving him some flowers, man. <laughs> you want to buy the these see through uh jerseys, the see through pants. See through jerseys. I'll buy the see through pants. I'll be the, I'll buy the, the see through socks. When when you were watching any of these games, could you see through their pants? Because I, I, I could see through Shohei's pants uh during our game or series against the uh the Dodgers and the let me tell you, I was, uh, I was not. I was not pleased seeing that. Um, I don't think for the away stuff, and I don't even think I think the Yankees have got off pretty clean, just because it's the same color on the same color, and they're like yeah. they're. I think they're different textures, really. Mm-hmm. They or the just the colors themselves give off different textures. That yeah. gray on gray, it's just, I don't see. think it's all that hard to see through. And then the white on white, especially with the pinstripes, they like flow into each other better. Okay, yeah. So and, uh, I'll, I'll have to wait until it rains. To yeah, the the only thing you'll have to uh, worry about is just those sweat stains. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, we can go into. Uh... Oh wait, no. Yeah. Before we get that, uh, we're not done with you yet. Yeah, I have a little bit of a hot take. I I didn't know if yeah. we might lose we might lose what little listeners we have with okay. what I'm about to say. But Let's my do. LVP, my lowest valued player of the series, is Aaron Judge. Oh no, the prodigal son, the face of the franchise. The golden boy. What do you do? What do you do, Liam? How do you hurt? Uh, he only had two hits and a 125 batting average over four games, and only contributed to an RBI and a single run scored. Which, I mean, if I came up to the big leagues and hit 125 with two hits, uh, scored a run, and batted in a, another player, I'd be going to bed with my head held high, knowing that I did something that not a lot of people would do, but. To start off the season, especially for a player of his caliber, I was looking at everyone else's stat lines. Mm-hmm. For for a player who who in the twenty twenty two season broke the home run American League home American League home run record, and mm-hmm. then uh, in twenty twenty three was on set to get real close to it, if not beat it, but then a yeah. considerable portion on it on the shelf. Yep. So hopefully it's just you know that that injury that uh, that's not lingering, but uh, not like it's an not, it's not injury, like a, but like hopefully it's just like okay, he didn't play a whole lot. 
last year. Yeah. So he's got. So get I, some... he's also spring hurt, if I remember correctly, a couple months back. But I'm and nothing. None of my LVPs uh, for these three series are like uh, spiteful indictments of them after some dupe from some due time. Like we're very early on. And it's, yeah, just like, it's a role that needs to be filled on the script. So yeah, um, yeah. Like th- no, this is is personal. It's just kind of like, oh boy, you were not great for this. I'm sorry, your your stat line was objectively the worst out of everyone. Okay. Well. Well. We can go uh, ahead and get into. Let's the, hear about the them, Giants, bro. All right. Yeah, Giants. Uh, opened up the season against uh, the Padres four game series ended splitting it two two game one. It was a beautiful day in San Diego. It was perfect to do some barbecuing. And there were two giants who were cooking that day, Logan Webb and Michael Conforto. Logan Webb had an amazing opening day, 97 pitches. He's probably the only pitcher for opening day that got remotely close to a hundred pitches. Yeah. That that's a crazy number. of pitches. Uh, six innings pitched. He faced 24 batters, which is almost the lineup three times. Five strikeouts, two walks, and only two earned runs. And backing up, backing him up on offense was Michael Conforto, who went three for four with one home run, one RBI, and three runs. How, 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 how do you how do you think that went? I mean, if this is game one and I got three runs, don't tell me they blew it. The Giants lost. <laughs> no, I know how. How, right? <laughs> How? Three runs off just one player. Off, yeah, off just one player, too. So no one else performed, really? There were a total of 10 strikeouts that the Giants had in one game. And despite the clear sky, there wasn't uh, there wasn't any solar power because Solaire did not perform. And poor Yaz struck out three times. And not even an ump who gave very generous calls to the Giants could get on top of that lineup. Uh, I could get the top of the lineup on base. Uh, on the defensive side, we had Luke Jackson when he came in for relief, did some walks, and uh, then immediately got pulled. I think he walked the bases loaded and then got pulled because he got injured. Mm. Uh, yeah, so sorry. He uh, was removed after only facing three batters and giving up two runs. Okay. After this game, Mike Yastrzemski was put on a plane to go for the uh, be there for the birth of his second child, and Good. which was followed by paternity leave. So I'm hoping his outing, you know, the, the bad outing was uh, his mind was on something else, rightfully so. But maybe he shouldn't have been there. Mm. Game two uh, brought the uh, first game or the first win of the season. Also the first night game. Kyle Harrison, rookie. Uh, well, he, he debuted last year under some uh, not great conditions. Uh so I kind of consider this to be like his true, you know, debut, especially as a starter. He also killed it. Six innings pitched, 23 batters faced, four strikeouts, five hits, two earned runs. And behind him on offense, you had Matt Chapman, who had five at-bats, three runs, five RBIs, and two home runs. Uh, the sh- Giants showed off what the NLS can expect from rookies and veterans alike. They had a total of eight runs off 13 hits compared to the Padres' three runs off eight hits. Two of the runs being Manny Machado solo home runs and one Tatis Jr. solo home run. Uh, it was another amazing start for the Giants rotation, and this time it was not wasted by a lack of offense. There was a scary moment with Tyler Rogers when he brought it into a two run. He brought it into a two run lead for the Giants mm-hmm. uh, before getting out. The bullpen remained rested with uh, three relievers pitching, only one inning each. Game three had an amazing start. Uh, it was an amazing game both offensively and defensively until the ninth. It was another great start for Giants starter Jordan Hicks, who I'm going to get into later at the end of this episode, but I slept on him last last episode. Five innings pitched, 81 pitches. Um, he had a uh, face a t- total of uh, 20 batters, six strikeouts, no hits. And he did fly. Like I said earlier, he, he flew under my, my uh, radar four years. Four-year contract for forty-four million dollars. Mm. Uh, he made the transition from relief pitcher to starter, and if this is how he's going to perform. The Giants got him for a steal. They got him from the uh, the Cardinals. Mm. Got to give him his flowers. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, offensively, the game was standard Giants fair. A lot of a lot of strikeouts, and things went wild in the eighth. 
Top of the lineup, Jung Hoo Lee at bat, one out, two one count, and he hits his first MLB homer. Uh, his first uh, hit was uh, the, the 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 previous game, I believe. Game one or game two, I forget. I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, mm-hmm. Poor guy, did it, and then uh, uh, got picked off immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I must be confused. I was, uh, from what I heard, I was expecting him to start the year in the IL, but I guess he got over whatever. Yeah, you scared me in last episode when you brought that up. I ended up editing it out, but uh, okay, cool. Because I, I was, I was very, I was like, what is he talking about? Like, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything about, about this. Um, but um, Jung Hoo Lee was at bat. There was one out, two one count. Hits his first MLB homer. Jorge Soler gets a single. Austin Slater pitch hits and gets the walk. On a full count, Matt Chapman gets a single. Wilma Flores gets a single and an RBI. Michael Conforto comes up, and boy, does he deliver. A grand slam. The lineup wrapped around to Jung Hoo Lee again, who grounded out on a 4-3 play to end the inning. It was smooth sailing from here. Eric Miller came out, came after a great eighth inning, with his first in the game, and gave up two runs. So now Camilo Duvall comes out. Coming off of an all-star game and a 70-save season, the excitement was palpable. And it started with a commercial break. A commercial break pitch clock violation. <laughs> Epic. Yeah. So I, commercial break, come in, one ball on line. What happened? Even uh, Dwayne Kuyper was confused. Like, did he get a violation, you know, during the commercial break? And he did. Um, the the ump even allowed him an extra pitch, uh, practice pitch, and he decided to throw another one, and the ump gave him a ball. He ended up uh, getting another during his outing and gave up a three-run homer to a rookie. Things were looking bad with one out and Manny Machado due with empty bases. The score was 9-6. Thankfully, Camillo got out of it, and after the game, Bob Melvin noted the two violations in the postgame, saying not ideal for a closer. I'll talk to him. Uh, Camillo is a great young pitcher, but these violations and lack of pressure on the base uh, hurt his numbers. Um, he does not hold anyone to the base. They they, they just steal. Uh, they just steal on him. Um, I'm hope- and I'm also hoping that with uh, Bob Melvin and his new higher standards that... um. We'll see how the young guys develop. Yep. And the last game of the season started with Joe, Joey Bart being DFA'd and eventually getting traded to the Pirates. Ooh. Um, very interesting to see how that happened. Uh, Phil, I, you know, like I, I talked a lot of trash last episode about Joey Bart, mm-hmm. but man, I, I can't help but feel bad because he got put on um, after Luke Jackson got hurt. He got DFA'd. Um, to to allow a new pitcher to come up, and uh, so we'll see how he performs with the uh, the Pirates. Um, and game four was not good. It was the first game of the season that I jumped early, out of early. At yeah, the last start about this. by Dalton Jeffries, whose outing ended in the second inning with nine runs, eight of them earned. And a score of 9 The Giants struggled until giving up in the eighth with a position player, Tyre Fitzgerald, on the mound. They did close the gap by that point to 4-12. Uh, and this was unfortunately also the debut of Kai Wei Tang, a Taiwanese pitcher. Uh, after a rocky, inconsistent start, he did eat up three innings with 68 pitches. And Wilmer Flores got hurt in the bottom of the first, going after a foul ball, uh, falling into the Padres' dugout. Uh, he almost got that ball, though. He almost got it. I mean, cool if he did, but that that was scary because he he runs into the dugout, flips over the the bar, and then like missed that first step and fell all the way down. So that could have ended with a uh, some sort of neck injury. So I'm glad he's okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to Kai Wei Tang. Um, I feel bad that he this this will be going more for the the next episode. Um, but I I just kind of want it noted that. This poor guy is really good and only seems to come out when things are looking bad mm. and he delivers. And it's just like, man, it'd be real nice if he could, you know, come out when, when things are going well. Um, the Giants split the series 2-2, so not the worst start, you know, to your opening series. Um, at least you, you break even there. Um, highlights. I want to give my MVP award to Michael Conforto for this series. He was a hit machine. He went six for 17, six runs, two home runs, five RBIs, and one grand slam. My my, my least valuable player, I got to go to uh, Jorge Soler. 
he went three for 16 this series, four strikeouts, and uh, way, way too many double play balls. Sometimes it kind of, there's like a point where it just started to feel like, do you not like Jung Hoo Lee? Because whenever Jung Hoo Lee was on, on base, it was a guaranteed grounded to double play. And uh, that's all I got for for this opening opening season or opening series. Who do you, who do you want to see more from as of right know. now? Just like if you if you could name one or two players that you want to see step up, who would they be? To see step up, um, like as in get better, or just like see more of them. Yeah, just get to see get better. See get better. Um, Tyro Estrada, that'd be nice. Uh, he's been struggling. Yaz has been struggling. Uh, at this point, you know, in this first series, Jorge Soler was he struggled in spring training. He struggled in. Uh, the series. Matt Chapman was good. Um, I want to see Alex Cobb get better so we can have a, a full rotation yet again. His his recovery got delayed. You know, see Don Jeffries go back to the bullpen and <laughs> kind of figure that out. You know, figure out what he's doing there. Uh, I don't know. This 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 opening series left uh, a lot to be desired, in my opinion. Anything else you'd like to add, or do we want oh, to skip your back out of the, to the other front of this war? We can, we can go to your uh, your series two against the D backs. It'll be a lot more fun. I feel like because you know, it only gets worse for here, from here for the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> the Diamondbacks, the Diamondbacks, National League reigning National League champions. Got a new uh, World Series winner. Got a new got a little bit of a new look to them. They got like this uh, cyan little outline instead of like the the tannish kind of color that they had before, but. They came. They're coming into the season with a lot to prove, and maybe the Yankees could have been an example out of them. Could have uh, been made an example out of, but didn't quite happen. A uh, series was uh, won by the Yankees two to one, with uh, just more stars uh, picking themselves up and showcasing why they're here. I mentioned in the last episode that I had a little bit of a hot take going on about Anthony Volpe. Hot take for uh, Yankees fan standards. Can you remind everyone what that hot take was? I didn't really like his defensive or offensive presence all that much. I think despite winning a Golden Glove, he still had a lot to prove on that side of the ball, on both sides of the ball, really. But I think those days are behind us because if I'm able to talk about a highlight while also giving out an MVP award... Anthony Volpe is my MVP for this series with a one, one, uh, 417 batting average off of five hits, an RBI, and three runs scored in three games. That's great. And he has become an absolute unit over at shortstop. The uh, alleged successor to Derek Jeter, who is not as bad defensively as YouTubers will have you know, he is. <laughs> He has more than enough clutch plays in postseason history to justify being in the Hall of Fame. YouTubers, you, you wicked SOBs, you. What an important position on the infield, you know. It really is because, like, you, you, you. If you have like a just a normal shortstop, you might not like feel how important it is. But when you have like a either a really good shortstop or a really bad shortstop. You know, you're you like, immediately can tell the difference. Yeah, you, you can see the difference. Like you can see how important that position is. And you know, if you have a bad shortstop, you want to kill yourself. <laughs> I KF. Yeah, yeah, because like you know, when you have that bad shortstop, it's like, oh, you know, there's what should have been an out at first, now a single. Now or, single. you know, if it's real bad, if um you know the outfield is expecting a uh, a big hit and they're you know out but it's like a grounder and it gets past the shortstop. You're like, okay, that might be a double now. Cause now the, the left fielder has got to like sprint like, you know, basically into the infield because your shortstop's like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Or they try to like do a diving check catch and just <laughs> absolutely flopped. I believe during this game, uh, during one of these games, he had an actual like a Jeter kind of moment, a Jeter play at first that set Yankees Twitter a fire. So I, I do want to give this guy his flowers, even though, I'm still going to be inspecting him through a big ass microscope, just <laughs> checking his everyday production 
making yeah. sure his fundamentals are to my liking. Another thing I don't like when shortstops do the double pump, where they like rear back their throwing arm like once or twice and then make the throw to first. Mm-hmm. Don't like that. One of my biggest pet peeves in the sport. Uh, it has been shown to like just waste time and compromising a play at first. Not, nothing that Volpe has done in particular is all that egregious. But to, to move on a little bit, there was a lot of talk going into the series. Oh, what, what, what if the Yankees came home and they're undefeated? Imagine that. Mm-hmm. And uh, wishful thinking, but you know, not, not everything can be perfect. Which, uh, But I want to note this as a low light. Nestor Cortez, fan favorite, goofy guy. Mm-hmm. very funny he's quite a character he came out uh to a game with cleats made of denim he's got the mustache he's bringing he i attribute him to bringing facial hair back to the yankees in some form or another he does have a really nice mustache he does but uh his start against the diamondbacks was not it giving up uh three runs on eight hits and also two walks only having two strikeouts in five innings he hasn't tallied a win or a loss yet which wins and losses don't really matter through pitchers but he hasn't tallied a win or a loss just because he hasn't gone that far in games uh his other starts haven't been all that bad relatively speaking he's gotten the job done uh every other time really just this start in particular when you know narratives are starting to form and everything it was a real momentum killer but I'm nothing indicative of him yet. You know, uh, I was talking, I think, last episode where before the pitch clock, he was a pitcher that kind of like had to trick every battery face on the plate with like crazy like uh, like pumps and like mm-hmm. just yeah. strategies to like mess up your timing. And you can't really do that now. I'm not saying he's not he's still not a bad pitcher, but he still has some kinks to work out. But I have all the confidence in him in what I think the team sees as their number one starter until Cole comes back. I do question that, but I do question his placement on that rung. I think he should at least be one down, and we'll get into who I think should be number one in a little bit. Is he number two or number three? I think he's a number two, but I'll I'll get into who's number one uh, next series. But uh, other than that, um, that's, that's my piece on Nestor Cortez. But to give out my... LVP award. It's got to go to Giancarlo Stanton, who's kind of had an egregious couple of games up until going into this series. In this, in this series, he did uh, nothing. In two games, he had no hits, no production whatsoever. And I think that spurred Boone to pull him out and give Judge a, a DH start. But Giancarlo Stanton, LVP for First series against the Diamondbacks. Maybe only series against the Diamondbacks. I'll have to double check. Okay, you guys took it 2-1. That's good. We took it 2-1. Even when I have some more negative things to say, everyone's production was still up. Nothing really all that egregious coming out. I just had... I was a little more critical of players who I expected to get off to. A normal start. Not even a hot start. When you go home 6-1? Nice. Oh boy! You ready for the uh, the Giants? No good, very bad game in Los Angeles. I'm gonna make my you're gonna make my whining sound like childish. <laughs> yeah, you know it's just like last year when when we thought about the podcast where I was like, what is like what's a podcast going to this you know hypothetical podcast going to be? Is it going to just be you being like, I'm having a great time, <laughs> and be just like, oh, I'm struggling. We're eating. We've resorted to eating our children. Like this is this is less like a, a podcast for you know the love of baseball and, and more like me on suicide watch, <laughs> and that's where we are after this 3 series against the Dodgers got swept. To be fair, if I'm biased, I think the Yankees are a one or two team t- in the league to have one or two. The other team I'm thinking is a top one or two is the Dodgers. Okay, well. How about you keep your opinions to yourself? Ooh, ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Because this was the first sweep of the season and the first look at the billion-dollar team. Even with a struggling Shohei and a swing-happy Mookie and Freddie and a shockingly competent bullpen, the Dodgers embarrassed the Giants in this three-game series. It also shows how being the face of the team as a pitcher is a double-edged sword. The Dodgers have been 
have seen a lot of Logan Webb, and they use they use those years brutally. They saw everything, and poor Webb only made it through three point two innings. He gave up on um, his slider, I think, and uh, made him a little bit more fastball uh, dependent. Um, he's, he's typically like a good, like his, his fastball is typically, uh, his, his least used pitch. He's, he's more of a ground ball kind of guy and the Dodgers just weren't having it. Uh, there's really not much to say. I mean, it's, it's a sweep. Like the, the, the first game of the series was eight, three. And the last two games were a little bit closer at five, four, um, Shohei is obviously not all there yet. Um, whether that's because of his injury or because, uh, you know, recent events around Ipe, I don't know. Um, but he had, Shohei had at least one strikeout um, per game, which I think is a, a silver lining for, for us, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got him out at least once, you know, greatest player on the planet. But you know, when you're, when you, when you're the, the Dodgers are going to be a scary team for, for anyone who plays, plays against them. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're first four. It's Mookie, Shohei, Freddie, and I think Will Smith, the, the Dodgers first four it's Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, and then Max Muncy. <laughs> it, <laughs> That it's just a brutal, brutal lineup, man. There, there's no rest. Half the lineup, you know, are are people that are not just fast, but all, they're all power hitters, man. <laughs> they, they if, if I can, if I can diagnose your your problem that was showcased a lot during the series, it would be the Dodgers have cemented themselves as a team that even when they're not producing mm-hmm. can just grind you down and outlive you. Yeah. They, they, they grind and they grind and they grind. They broke our starter. They broke our ace. They broke them. 3.2 innings. Even when they don't have their biggest stars performing, mm-hmm. they have at least enough pieces in the lineup to get players on base, uh, send players home. And then when they turn over to the other side of the ball, they just need to get outs, and they've effectively really been good at keeping runs down and keeping yeah. batters from uh, stepping out of the box. A lot easier when you're the slowest team in the in the league. Yeah, even, like, even they as of right they're now, they're really the anti Giants yeah. if you think of it. Even, even just even how they're built. As of this recording, uh, the Giants have yet to steal a base. Wow. Logan Webb was the uh, he started the second game. It was Keaton Wynn starting the first one. Um, and then you had Kyle Harrison starting the last one, uh, and I, out of this uh, poopy poopy uh, game or series, uh, I'm going to give my MVP to Kyle Harrison, who had a, a less than great debut last year. He showed up because the rotation sucked and was played by injuries. He's supposed to be on a strict pitch limit, but you know, as, as the season went on, last season went on, and we got a little desperate. He stayed in longer and longer. Um, last year, he was obsessed with getting strikeouts, um, but he has said that now he for this this season, his goal is to stay in as long as possible, make it through at least six. And so far, he's been he's been doing that. Uh, this was a tough loss for him, uh, but I, I think he stayed strong, and he kept the game close as best as he could. And even got uh, a few strikeouts, including a Shohei strikeout. Um, I, I believe Shohei had he had at least one strikeout per game. Um, unfortunately, against uh, it was against the Giants that Shohei got his first home run as a Dodger, and uh, that will live in infamy for uh, the rest of baseball history. And my uh, LVP has to go to uh, Mike Yastrzemski. Uh He's been in a slump from the very beginning of the year. Um, at least in the opening day game, you know, he had to go, t- uh, to the birth of his child. I could look, you know, I could look, could over look that. past that. I could look past that. Like, okay. Um, but in his one Padres game and for the entire series. So up until this point from opening day until this 
the end of this Dodger series, he has an ERA of zero. Oof. Yeah. And I'm hoping that he's able to pull out of it sooner rather than later. Just so what a oh, what a disaster of a of a series that was, man. You put yourself in a hole and now you gotta look to who you got coming up to dig yourself out. After yeah, after that that series, uh we're now you know, the Padres, Dodgers, it's you're two and five. And it's like, that's not fun. That's not a fun, fun record to have coming home. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to talk about that series anymore. So we'll go back to you. So we'll go, we'll go to the other side of the <laughs> yeah, war, the yeah. other front. You're like, uh, you know, to keep with this, this war analogy, you know, you're like post D-Day allies and the Giants are the Russians in Stalingrad. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing it. Anything, just throwing bodies into the grinder and hoping to get a win out of it. <laughs> so early in the season, damn, bro. It's rough, man. I'm, I'm feeling the roughness from you. But uh, contrary to popular belief, I don't hate our in-division our in division rivals, the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. When I was a, a wee lad, I think I had my best baseball season in a Blue Jays uniform. It's when they had their like new era logo with like the black and like the the silver kind of like outline with uh, a logo that i actually like contrary to a lot of blue jays fans even but they hold a little special place in my heart and they hold a very special place in my heart this season because they have two of my fan favorite players ikf and justin turner justin turner one of my actual favorite players in the league maybe of all time i think he's just a a very good character, a very good face, and boy, does he produce. They needed another power hitter, and so far they got him. I don't like that he's playing third base majority. Uh, his age, I don't know how mobile he's going to be, and a very injury-prone position to put him in, especially after he learned. I think he was a first base when he signed with the Red Sox. Nice okay, I've got traded, but, right? IKF uh, uh, didn't okay. resign, which uh, he gave an interview for Yes when he came back for this series, saying that he still misses a lot of the guys in the clubhouse, mm-hmm. and he would have liked to come back, but there wasn't really a, a place for him yeah. in the lineup. And I think after the season he had last year, where he was kind of that big utility man kind of player, he expected some more playing time or at least some more money, mm-hmm. but. Uh, the Blue Jays had a more tailored offer f- uh, for what he was asking for compared to the Yankees, so he headed up even more north. Started out in Texas. He was a Ranger when, I think, at one point, okay. when he won his uh, gold glove, but now he's probably in the farthest place from Texas. But it was great to see him back. I think he got a couple of boos when he struck out, but... I, I was happy to see him back in back in the Bronx to give a, give us a little hello. Did he get a little welcome back video? Or Yeah, he got a little bit of a welcome back video. That's always fun. It's even sweeter because the Yankees won this series 2-1. to one. <laughs> I have much nicer things to say about this series just because of I can now look back at all the other series and compliment people there, give them their dues. Okay. But uh, rotation issues that we thought we might have haven't really reared their ugly head so far. Sure, Nestor has a, I think a, he has a one win, one loss, but nothing too egregious. And our number four and number five starter, Clark Schmidt and Louis Gill, not terrible. Okay. Not terrible. These are numbers that can be worked with. Mm. They both have just over a little bit of nine innings pitched and I'll talk about them more in depth if we get to our next segment, but getting into who deserves flowers for this series. And maybe I haven't mentioned beforehand, Marcus Stroman uh, came in would it ideally be a number three kind of starter, but he at the moment, I think is a number one starter guy right now. You guys picked him up in the, uh, the off season, picked him up in the off season. You had some really nice things mm-hmm. to say about him. In the last episode. During this series, at least, he did not allow any runs on three hits and only gave up one walk and had six strikeouts and six hits. Oh, that's great. That's, that's pretty great. good. And 
to give him and to give him even more flowers, he has not let up a run this entire season so far. After twelve innings of work, how many starts? Uh, okay. Two starts. Nestor, I think, is the only guy at the moment with three starts. Okay, so after two, but starts. he's coming up soon. We, uh, it's just because he only has two starts that I have not given him my MVP award for this season, for not this this series. Which I'm gonna I'm gonna double dip. Two time MVP, Anthony Volpe, two time series series MVP this season alone. After I kind of grilled him a little bit, <laughs> yeah, and then he immediately made you eat your words. Immediately, uh, four fifty five batting average this series on five hits, three runs scored in three games. Hats off to the kid. Yeah, he's getting that, it done. That he's doing improvement. Game. What's his What's his on base percentage? On base percentage, uh, four eight eight. Two home runs so far, 417 average, 667 slugging, 1.154 OPS. He He's getting his due. He's showing why he belongs here mm-hmm. and why, despite we have other shortstop prospects in the farm system already that are slowly making their way up and maybe one that's already major league ready, he's showing that I think this is his spot to lose. And I don't think, I don't see anything really stopping his momentum at the moment maybe maybe pitchers around the league get together and figure out all the changes he made and plot against him but he's had a really really good three game uh three series uh anthony volpe mvp uh to get into a little clutch moment soto hailing from the dominican republic heavy dominican population in new york got his first hit place going ballistic it's gonna. He says it's gonna be feeling like the World Baseball Classic every home game, and I, I can't wait for the summer where I think we're definitely gonna be seeing that. And you'll see uh, the the Yankees in in full form. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just been a amazing character for the team and for the fan base to interact with. I don't think it was during these series, but I think it was like yesterday, maybe against the Marlins, where he was signing baseballs right before the opening pitch was about to get thrown out as in like the game is about to start oh and he's starting still... pitcher on the mound he's going to take his spot his spot in right field and he gets close enough to the fans where he can like hear them and he's like talking back and forth with one of them and he gets up close someone throws him a baseball and he just has like a marker from wherever yeah and he signs it and throws it up to the guy before i think Actually taking his spot. I think an actual pitch was thrown. But don't quote me on that. But he's just one of those guys where it's like, I think he really cares about the fan base. And he wants to do right by them. So it's just these nice little moments that he has where he's just, I think, amazing. He put over over, uh, Jose Trevino, who people are kind of like a little bit over at the moment. Uh, Everyone's kind of getting on the Austin Wells train. Uh, Trevino, of course, being the catcher, Austin Wells being the prospect that we brought up to be our number two guy for now. But Trevino won Platinum Glove uh, two years ago and kind of had a down year last season. But Soto put him over saying when he made that uh, game-saving play at first at a, at home, rather, that first series, saying he's a Platinum Glove, you know, you... You, you you throw it at him and he'll if you throw it near him he'll catch it and do the thing and if he he did the thing just some some great moments from him but uh to get into some low lights nearly blowing a seven run lead in game two that Yikes. is rough yeah not not the best the the Yankee social media had a very good post where it's a uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. he was celebrating uh rounding third base. Oh yeah, and he does like his little sh- like he does his know, little sh- hush. like oh, Vlad Guerrero really uh making the Yankees pay, cutting the lead down to six. Uh, so some more things happened, and maybe they should have been a little more worried. But <sighs> Yankees still came away with the win in game two. Whenever you're watching, because you know we have two very different teams, so whenever you're watching and you see your team have a seven run lead, are you kind of like sweet, like it's. Yeah. Just maintain, guys. Or are you worried? Hell, I might even turn the game off depending on what editing it's in. But if I if I see maybe like if let's say it's like seven nothing, if I see like three runs come on by, then I start getting worried. Yeah, like with with me, if we had like a a seven run lead, 
I'm looking at that and I'm just thinking it's not enough. It's not enough. Because if it's if it's deep enough into a game, it becomes a bullpen problem, and I never want to have a bullpen problem. The Yankees' reputation is that they always get more out of less. Mm-hmm. They just have that kind of system where it's the pitching coaches and fundamentals will just be worked into a spot that they really like. Yeah. I less so like their approach with starting pitchers, even though I think some of the starters kind of need that. Mm-hmm where they'll kind of like confine them to a certain system that like was working for them at the time with at least one guy. Like I forget who, but they were trying to mold him in the same like style as Tanaka when he just doesn't throw the same kind of pitches as Tanaka. So it's like square pig round hole guys. You got to figure out what works for him specifically. Uh, It's new age stats. I think they can take, too much of a dive into Mm -hmm. and that might hurt some development that we've seen especially last season but i never like having bullpen issues and if i see that we have bullpen issues like i start to panic because games are won in late innings you know you got to maintain whatever whatever lead that you have and if you don't have it you kind of got to get it back Mm -hmm. and the easiest way to get it back is to get on the offensive side of the ball as fast as possible uh To give out an LVP award real quick, Mm -hmm. this is the weakest maybe LVP award I've handed out so far because every other instance he's come out in spring training and this season, Mm -hmm. he's been mighty fine. But uh, Ian Hamilton, during uh, his appearance during this series, three runs in .2 innings, but they're the only three runs he's let up uh, this entire season. Is he a relief pitcher or closer? Okay, he's a I mean, relief type pitcher. People are there's a lot of talk on who's going to be the closer. I think he's in that conversation, or he might just be a very good setup man. And he says he's pitched total. Uh, Six point one. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, no, that's not bad at all. He's gotten some reps in four games started so far. Uh, Four point two six ERA. That'll go down naturally with time. Am I right in thinking that his when you say that he gave up three runs in point two innings? Is that the the game that they almost lost? Gave up their seven run lead. Yeah, that was that game. I remember where I found it now. If he were to end his, if that was the only game he pitched this entire season, his ERA would be forty point five. It's so funny. He's like early in the game, like because the Dodgers did this, um, where you could see like their their stuff for the pitchers, mm-hmm. and they would update their ERA in real time. <laughs> like, like even if it was like their like, so it was like really funny, just like seeing, you know, the guy come out. It's his like he gives up a run. It's his first outing. And it's like ERA is like you know it's like forty. <laughs> like okay, like, calm down, Dodgers. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask your permission to cheat if I could give out another LVP award. Go for it, uh, Angel Hernandez for existing. <laughs> yep, a particularly egregious call, literally right down the middle dead center of the strike zone against uh, Glaber Torres called a ball, not only called a ball, it should have been an indictment against the catcher because he like stepped off and stepped back on and didn't even look at Glaber before he threw the pitch. So that should have been an infraction and he should have been awarded a ball, but it was, that's how he was struck out. And uh, there was a little bit of a heated argument there. I think Booney came out a little bit to kind of diffuse the situation, but not a good look for maybe the worst umpire of all time. Uh, no, I believe uh, officially the the worst ump of all time when he sued the MLB for okay, racial discrimination. Officially. And uh, the uh, MLB, okay. I'll I'll let him whine all he wants, yeah. but uh, I the, mean at least call some some balls he, and strikes. The uh, well, the MLB had receipts and they yeah. had they had his performance and they're like, he's not good. You're, he's statistically like the worst guy. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's just, yeah. He's just, he's just the worst. And well, Siri, am I ready for a giant series? Number three. Well, let's, the let's talk about them. Giants. Yeah. What, what an NL West heavy uh, schedule. This was for the giants, Padres, mm-hmm. Dodgers, Padres. Well, the, uh, the giants uh, had their first winning series and it's at home. Uh, they took the series two one. Um, despite that, uh, I don't think all is well. Uh, it, it's uh, some red flags were popping up. The the Giants' uh, offense continue, is continuing to struggle, and the uh, the win 
the win, two wins only occurred due to bizarre events and a frankly bad call in Jorge Soler's favor. Uh, for the bizarre stuff, uh, Tatis hit a ball with all his might, and it traveled a whopping two feet. Thinking they'd be called foul, uh, he just stood in the, yeah. Thinking that it was going to be a foul ball, uh, he just stood in the box. Uh, Patrick Bailey got the ball and tagged him out while he's still in the box. Always run. And then again later on in a uh, key double play moment, the ball is thrown to Hassan Kim, who attempts to tag out Soler going to second base. Hassan Kim is then throwing out to Bogarts for the double play, or at least that's how it was supposed to happen. Instead, Soler ran into Kim's glove, knocking the ball, knocking the ball out. Breaking the double play. So I thought, okay, Soler is going to be called out on the tag, if not for interference, right? But that didn't happen. The ump called Soler safe and uh, safe at second, and the Giants were given the fattest gift of the season so far. Because Soler should have been called out. I don't understand. The ball was in Kim's glove, and Soler runs into the glove, and then the ball gets knocked out. But like after... Uh, Kim's hand gets kind of knocked back, right? Yeah. So I thought it was like, well, that's at least going to be a call. And maybe, maybe the reason um, the ump decided not to call Soler out on the tag or the potential interference is because earlier in the game, that ump gave a disgusting, disgusting, late infield fly rule call. After the Padres, uh, I think it was Kim again, um, dropped the ball. And it was called an infield fly roll that ended the inning early. And we came back to uh, came back from commercial break um, with Bob Melvin just yelling at the ump that I was going to get tossed, but uh, he did not. And I, that just kind of like blew my mind, you know? Because like the infield fly rule is already confusing as is. And the fact that it is umpire discretion doesn't make it any better. And then just for it to, to be like, you didn't, you, you called, you didn't call the infield fly rule until after the ball was dropped is utterly ridiculous. But highlights uh, for the series is Jordan Hicks. Um, as I said earlier, I completely overlooked him in the off season and I'm a fool for it. He was a trade from the struggling Cardinals and Hicks to me was seen as an admission from the front front office that they dropped the ball. Because the move from reliever to starter is great for Hicks. But at the same time, with Shohei, Yamamoto, Snell, who at the time was unsigned, and Shota, who was with the uh, the Cubs, taking the spotlight, he just Hicks kind of seemed underwhelming to me. Hmm. Uh, he was pulled out early in his first start as a precaution, and that rightfully made him mad. So what, did, what, do, you, what do you think Hicks did? What did he do? Liam, he delivered. He delivered. It was his second start, his second time against the Padres, and this felt like a real test because they've seen him before. They know what he can do. So Hicks pitched seven innings, only allowed five hits, only two uh, two runs. One of them was earned, and one of them was only a run because uh, he had an errant throw to second for a double, an attempt of a double play, and he had five strikeouts. Five Ks. That's nice. Five Ks, yeah. It was... A beautiful start. Guess what his ERA is for the season? That's only two start. Yeah, for 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 the start. Uh, hit me. All right. Well, I want to kind of show you what our ace is doing right now. Logan Webb currently has an ERA of four point eight six off three starts. Jordan Hicks, two starts, ERA of point seven five, and obviously that's going to change. It's only you know, uh, two starts, uh, but for someone to go from the bullpen as a reliever to a starter, I, I think he's showing some good promise. Um, I, and I hope that he continues to succeed. There was also some clutch moments. Uh, one notable one, I think is a struggling Tyro Estrada who hits it in the left center field for an RBI to walk off the game. He, he really needed that. Um, unfortunately that, that clutch play was not enough to get him to uh, out of his slump. He had some, he's had some very, very ugly, ugly swings I, i'm talking like because it's at least one thing if you you swing striking striking out um going for a ball that hits the dirt but like at least your bat was where you anticipated it to go mm-hmm. uh, tyro is swinging at balls that hit the dirt but his bat is like in the middle of the zone he's just not seeing it. but he he got that clutch rbi and like you liam 
I'm double dipping. You're double dipping. Except it's for a low light. No. I know. I'm sorry. Mike Yastrzemski. LVP yet again. My favorite guy on your team. I know. I I like Yastrzemski. And, and, you know, I would say that if, if, if there's one criticism, it's that our <laughs> low lights are definitely reactionary. Mm-hmm. And they are not um, indicative of, you know, what he may do or what he has done. Uh, but Yaz's con- struggles are continuing. And then Tyro, don't think that you aren't lined up to be on this list either. Uh, mm-hmm. Yaz got his first three hits of the season. Um, so that's good. Uh, he... Ended the series with a batting average of like 1.7 or 1.6. And I think, honestly, the only thing that's kind of keeping him uh, on on the team right now is the fact that he's a great defender. Mm. Um, otherwise, I think Luis Matos would be coming up series. To, they, they they end opening week. Uh, what What is that? 4-6. Four, four, yeah, 4-6. They end the series 4-6. And uh, before we get to our next segment, right, uh, Liam. I was nearly called the other guy. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm keeping track of um, the umpire scorecards. You can find them, you know, on, on X at ump scorecard and also and on I'm Instagram sorry. now. So I'm just kind of keeping track. Um, our, for, we'll go for the Giants first because that's just who I have up right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the total right now, as, as, of, um, as of right now, April 9th, um, before I think before any of our teams play. Uh, the ump differential for for the Giants is negative 1.22. So the Giants have lost almost a run and a quarter. Uh, the worst differential was negative 0. 0.73 uh, or 0. 0.73 runs for the, the Padres. Uh, that was umpire Vic Carapaza. And our best differential was against the Dodgers, um, Phil Cuzzy, who gifted the the Giants 1.46 runs. And just think how crazy that is. In, in one single game, the Giants were given 1.46 runs, mm. and our differential is still negative 1.2. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take a look at the Yankees, uh, you have a total differential of positive 1.78. Yay. Your yeah. best differential was against the Diamondbacks. It was 1.28. You were gifted 1.28 runs. And umpire was Brian Walsh. And you'll probably already know this one. Your worst differential was against Toronto at negative 0.52. And the ump was Angel Hernandez. Say it ain't so. It, it is so. And is. we'll just keep track of that for the uh, the whole season. Um, and we'll just see, like, you know, how the, the differentials, you know, what the uh, it's going to be interesting to see who who's who do you think is going to be favored the most at the end of the season between our two teams? Probably me. Probably, probably my Yanks. Probably probably the Bombers. Uh, what three times as many favored runs over the <laughs> over the yeah. Giants? <laughs> uh, you love to see it. Uh, uh, how, how was there a run differential last year? Uh, total favoritism for the Giants was negative one point nine. Yankees they got point three one. So pretty uh. Pretty fair for the the Yankees, all things considered, I guess. It's point over the course of the 162 games, only a third of a run. So we'll see how this goes for the uh, the year. Hmm? All right, let's get to this last segment here. How does that sound, Liam? This sounds like a great idea. Liam, explain to the listeners what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are combining our arms. We are going to be comparing our number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five starters. And... We're essentially creating a starting rotation by mashing together our two lineups. Maybe one will be more dominant than the other. It is an odd number after all. But we're going to be seeing who has the better number one starter, the better number two, three, four, and five. And this is going to be changing throughout the season. Yep, we'll uh, every periodically week. keep you all updated. Uh, we are eventually also going to get to the um, the rest of the uh, the lineup rest of the lineup uh you can pay attention to if you've been paying attention to our name you're going to realize what stat we're going to put yeah. above the rest all right so for our first one starter number one logan webb versus nestor cortez logan webb for the 2024.2 war no wins one loss 4.86 era three games uh three games started 16.2 innings pitched 
13 strikeouts and a uh, whip of 1.560. And who's he facing against? Buffing Webb's going to be facing off against Nestor Cortez. War not calculated yet. Uh, win loss total of one and one, 500 record over three games. 18 in it, innings pitched. He's uh, let up 15 hits, uh, seven runs, one home run, uh, four walks, 13 strikeouts with a 3.50 ERA and a 1.06 whip. Are you looking at the MLB stats or? or uh, I'm looking at stat which gives me everything. Okay. Well, let me go over for uh, uh, Mr. Webb. Mr. Webb here. Um, does he have his? Do we have his hits on? Oh, I can send you the link. I think I have the uh, Giants people. Oh, okay. Here we go. I got it right here. Okay. Um, yeah, Logan Webb has given up 22 hits, nine runs, nine earned runs, one home run. Total of 278 pitches. Over 16.2 innings pitched. Let's look at Nestor Cortez. All right, Andrew. Let's put our brains together. Who do we want more? Oh, boy. We should have had a way to figure out these ties, because this is, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Um, hmm. I'll make my argument for Nestor, mm-hmm. and then I'll wait to hear you out on argument for Webb. Okay. We will write down who we favor. And then at the um, like I count of three, we will reveal who we both picked. Does that sound like a plan? Okay. Okay. Nestor Cortez compared to Logan Webb. Nestor Cortez has 18 innings pitched compared to Logan Webb's 16.2. Uh. Through what I have heard, Nestor might have had some rougher starts, but he has been left out in the game for longer. Mm-hmm. Just through innings pitched, at least. Uh, he's only given up one home run compared to Logan Webb's one, so they're tied in that aspect. Uh, Logan Webb's ERA, 4.86. Nestor Cortez's ERA, 3.50. Okay. Uh, Nestor, Cortez, Nestor Cortez is pitching three games compared to Logan Webb's also three. So working with the exact same window there. I think my argument for Logan Webb is going to be that I think he has better longevity compared to Nestor. Mm-hmm. Okay. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, Logan Webb doesn't rely on games, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, ground ball. He's a, he's a ground ball guy. And as long as you have a confident defense behind him, he's going to succeed. And, and, and I feel like with some of these, these, these stats, you know, the, the, some, what, what, what keeps Logan Webb, what holds him back is the rest of the team. And giving up one run, two runs really shouldn't be, it shouldn't kill the game, but when Logan Webb's on the mound, for some reason, there's no offense. Hmm. And I don't know how you calculate that, but I bet if you put Logan Webb and a just a what you consider to be a normal defense behind him, he has a way lower ERA and uh, way better, uh, more quality starts. Um. Like I said, in for his his first start of the se- season, ninety seven pitches, five strikeouts, and only two earned runs. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Yeah, that is that is that is my my defense of Logan Webb. That is your defense of Logan. All right, you got your pick down. I do. All right, you want you want to count us down for this first one? All right, three, two, one. Logan Webb. Webb. I think absolutely, especially because mm-hmm. Nestor Cortez has not had to play a three-game series against the Dodgers. Yes, that is also true. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the the Astros are anything to scoff at, mm-hmm. but I think the Dodgers are a far better team than them. Speaking of the Astros, Ronell, back to back, no hitters, mm-hmm. wild. Keep an eye on that guy. All right, ready for starter number two? Ready for starter number two. It's going to be Kyle Harrison versus Carlos Rodon. Kyle Harrison, Carlos Rodon. I want to look up uh, Carlos Rodon stats real quick. On uh, MLB. Compare that to Kyle I'm going to be honest, not mm-hmm. too shabby. Carlos Rodon? Yeah. Let's take a look here. Let's see. Oh, go, go over his stats. Going over Carlos Rodon's stats, he's given up three runs in two starts. He has a 2.79 ERA over 9.2 innings pitched. He's let up 12 hits. However, let me check his... Where's his K's? Where's his K's? Uh, he has seven. No, the last seven games. Uh, strikeout seven, seven, seven strikeouts. strikeouts? Yeah. Nice for the twenty twenty four season. I don't know why I can't find his case right now. It's staring me right in the face. It's seven stri- uh, seven strikeouts over two starts, and a one point seven six WHIP. Uh, we're comparing that to Kyle Harrison. Kyle Harrison, uh, his first full season as a starter, an ERA of four point nine. He's one and one uh, off two starts, eleven innings pitched, nine strikeouts, and he has a uh, see total batters face forty six. His K over nines is seven point three six. His um, walks over nine is two point four five. Same thing for home runs. Uh, did I say nine strikeouts? Because he has nine strikeouts. <laughs> 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 that's pretty cool off two starts that's like four and a half strikeouts per game or per start um so what what is your what what is your defense of uh Kyle Harrison uh I want to say that's your guy uh, or sorry, Kyle Harrison. <laughs> uh, Carlos Rodon, sorry. Right. Kyle Harrison, though, uh, seven, uh, he induced, has induced seven double plays. Carlos Rodon, seven strikeouts over two games. Uh, 9.2 innings pitched. Only three runs. Only three runs for a guy that was... Not really. I don't know. Really, I expected him to be farther down in the lineup. I was mm-hmm. maybe expecting him to be a number four guy, believe it or not. Okay. But I think at the moment, he's the second best pitcher. If he only if he only could get up to maybe around like uh, uh, comfortably around where Nestor's at in terms of innings pitched. Mm-hmm. Not even Nestor. Uh, let's say Stroman. Stroman has a 12 innings pitched right now. If he had more like 12 innings pitched, I think we're going to see a lot of the same production. Okay. Other than that, I believe... Let me just check the ERA. He has a 2.79 ERA. Compared to Kyle Harrison's... Kyle Harrison is... Yeah, 4.91. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing I had to say for Kyle Harrison is... Uh, he's a young guy. This is going to be his first complete season. Uh, he debuted in uh, late August, so at the, the end of the season, when it was kind of like, uh, I don't know if we're going to make it, guys. Um, 
his right now for the season, 12 hits, six runs, six earned runs, three home runs. <laughs> and uh, he only hit a base. He only hit a guy once and uh, three walks. Nine strikeouts. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I, I think it, between these two, I think it's going to be Rodon. I was also going to say Rodon. So we'll go with Rodon for starter number two. Uh, and now we th- have a very interesting pitcher three round. Yeah, pitcher three round is going to be a tough one. Uh, Jordan Hicks versus Marcus Stroman. Uh, Jordan Hicks, 2024 season, or stats, one win, no loss, ERA of .75 two, off two starts, 12 innings pitch, 11 strikeouts. Uh, let's take a look here. I want to see how many... Uh, He's allowed only two doubles. He got one double play. Off of seven double play opportunities. Um, And... I don't know. Like I just think that off of these two starts, this is... This is a... Strong, strong start for someone who... Who who was uh, condemned to to be a reliever? I definitely see this changing. Maybe even when Stroman gets out of this spot, if someone else slides in. But uh, Marcus Stroman, ten strikeouts in two games, zero ERA. Oh, zero. Okay. Over twelve innings, uh, only has allowed seven hits, no earned runs. Uh, whip of 0.83. Oh, man. The little thing stronger than 0.75 runs is zero. Is zero. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. Let's see. So he's allowed four doubles compared to the two for uh, Jordan Hicks. And neither of them have allowed triples. He has one double play off of five opportunities compared to Jordan Hicks. One out of from seven. Oh, man. Marcus Stroman has one hit by pitch. How many strikeouts does uh, Stroman have? Uh, Ten, I believe. Ten, okay, compared to Hicks is eleven. I gotta go with with Jordan Hicks. If really? I, yeah. I disagree. I don't know. I think there's just something about moving your way up from relief pitcher to to starter that puts him over for you. Yeah, and and the fact that he got pulled out early in his first start, he got pulled out in the fifth, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I don't know. Like I I don't know. Like I wonder what it would look like if he if he stayed in stayed in the whole start um the fact that it was against the Padres both times so like he has like that that he he he, he was seen twice like the line the, the Padres have come up against him twice and they did mm-hmm. worse the second time um when, when they probably should have done a little bit better <laughs> I think that speaks um, a lot but I can't in good conscience uh, follow through. So this might this might be a tie. It might it might be a tie. Um, in his second start, seven innings pitched, five hits, two runs, one, only one earned run, five strikeouts. Uh, I don't know. Like it's gonna be a tough one because like I think these are two guys that if they keep on the same trajectory, they have. They might be compared to each other quite a bit. Yeah, I think so. Uh, man, I don't know. Oh, no, man. <laughs> this is going to be a tough one. Um, well, 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 we can keep a tab on this. We can mark it down as a tie. We can. We can. No decision here. Much like many um, 
how, how a lot of uh, giant starts are going to be. Huh. I thought you were going to say swing state voters. No, no decision. I think I spelled decision right. We'll come back yep. to that. We'll, we'll see how that is. We'll keep a tab on it. We'll we'll uh, update y'all throughout the season. Yeah, and then we've got Keaton Wynn versus um, Clark Schmidt. Clark Schmidt. Uh, Keaton Wynn, let me bring up his stats real quick. Keaton Wynn, 0 and 2, 5.73 ERA, two starts, 11 innings pitched, seven strikeouts. Strikeouts, uh, one whip. And uh, yeah, one whip. One whip. Clark Schmidt, nine strikeouts over two games. 9.2 innings pitched, 4.66 ERA, uh, only allowed 13 hits and five runs, and one home run. Okay. Only allowing three walks. Let's see, we're, we're okay. Uh, King Wynn allowed one home run. He has seven earned runs. I, I'm going to go with Clark Schmidt on this one. <laughs> really? Keen, I mean, uh, Keen Wynn has the. Uh, uh, I'm expecting. What's up? Not, I'm, I'm still inspecting, but please go on. Uh, I don't know. The only thing, the the one thing that Kane Wynn definitely has going for him is that he was not supposed to be in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, supposed and he's to be, seen more innings than Clark Schmidt, someone who is expected to see the lineup. He's uh, Kane Wynn um, was supposed. To, he, he's he's filling in for Alex Cobb mm-hmm. uh, while he continues to recover. Um, I think he's going to end up taking Dalton Jeffrey's spot, or uh, no, no, not Dalton Jeffrey's spot, because uh, now our lineup is complete with. Snell and um, so so Keen would will probably be demoted to the uh, you know the uh, bullpen once Cobb comes back and I think Dalton Jeffries is out. Nothing, nothing wrong know, with having an emergency starter. No, no, but I don't know. I just think that. Because uh, Stroman has how many total innings pitched? Twelve? Or not the Stroman? Uh, Clark Schmidt. Clark Schmidt, yeah. He has uh, 9.2. 9.2? So he has more innings pitched. But I, I think he won me over to Clark Schmidt's side. I think Schmidt is more just a more proven type of guy. Yeah. So we'll go, we'll go Schmidt. We'll go Schmidt. Clark Schmidt. And number five is going to be Dalton Jeffries versus Luis Gill. <laughs> can I? Can we? Can I name one? Uh, one stat, and then we can uh, compare just one stat between the two, and okay. then make our judgments. Uh, Luis Gill. Uh, well, first, uh, Dalton Jeffries one strikeout. Yeah, Dalton Luis Jeffrey. Gill, fourteen strikeouts. Okay. Interesting. He leads the team in strikeouts. Well, let's take a look at that ERA, though, huh? Uh, three. 22.5. Ooh, ooh, you got me. You got me. Uh, <laughs> put, put, put Dolphin Jeffries on, on, the, on for the win. Uh, how, many, <laughs> how many innings pitched? How many innings pitched? Uh, innings pitched. Nine innings pitched. Okay. Uh, Dolphin Jeffries, two. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, looks like it's going to be uh, Luis Gill, huh? Luis Gill. Luis Gill, 14 strikeouts. Good for him. Yeah. He's not even supposed to be here. <laughs> it's like you weren't even invited. Okay, that'll finish our combined arms. Um, I think next episode we'll uh, we'll do uh, – we'll come back to the Jordan Hicks versus Marcus Stroman. We'll update people there. And, we'll figure uh, that out. Um, do you want to do like the outfield or something? Or? Right now? Uh, next episode. Oh, next time, yeah. Next time we'll do the. Uh, do you want? Yeah, we'll do the outfield. We'll do the outfield next time. Cool. All right. And I think that'll be it for this uh, this episode. There's a nice little nice little shindig we got going on. Yeah. Um. For the the Giants, whenever we come back, we are going to be playing against. The Nationals, Tampa Bay, Miami, 
Arizona, and we'll end it before we start the uh, next episode. Will be up before um, we can start the uh, the Mets series against the Mets. No, and uh, see what's we'll we covered that episode though. What about uh, New York? Who, what's, what's New York looking like? The Yanks. Uh, when's our when's our next uh, recording date? Um, April twenty first. April twenty. So for all right, I got it right here. Um, I got uh, no, I got it. Okay. Uh, we are currently in the middle of a series with the Marlins. Okay. But then we will then go to the Guardians, then back to the Blue Jays, and then we'll finish up. With the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays, okay. Oh, and and we're going to be just shy of a four game series against the uh, against the Athletics. Oh man, I wonder how that's going to go. Oh no. Oh man, we'll get some nice early stat pad, you know. <laughs> are, are, aren't you guys excited for that episode? <laughs> it's the <laughs> Athletics and Mets epi- the Athletics and Mets episode back to back in the same episode. That's awesome. Oh man. All right. Well, no, they'll, they'll do it. For, for this episode it's quite good I'll right, we'll see you guys in two weeks we'll see how it all goes enjoy some baseball y'all have a good one bye bye